Today I'm taking this craft -a brew mead kit and turning it into, you guessed it, mead. So let's get started. So craft -a brew sent me this kit to review and to talk about. I've made a lot of mead at this point. I've done 350 something sort of meads. I've done one other mead kit that was provided to me in the past. Very curious to see how this goes. This is not gonna be a super, super in-depth video that talks through every single step of the mead making process. And I say that because my buddy doing the most, who does a lot of stuff for Crafter Brew, has done a great video about this kit already. I'm actually gonna take and turn this kit into something different than what is probably in the instructions. So let's open it up. First of all, the packaging is really nice. Everything about it so far is very bee themed, very mead themed. We got a guide, very good looking guide, yeah. Okay, so again, I've done this a lot, so I'm not necessarily gonna go ahead and walk through every single step, but it does provide airlock, bung, some stopper of some sort. You got your auto siphon, well, racking cane. Sorry, racking cane, not auto siphon. Got some sanitizer. We've got some D47 yeast nutrient. They have staggered yeast nutrient. That is smart right there. There you go. This kit's already winning points in my heart. Racking cane, funnel, which I'll be honest with, I don't ever use funnels when I'm pouring honey in, so probably won't be using that. Glass carboy and some tubing. All right, so the only thing they don't really have is an auto siphon, which probably expensive, right? They also have, as part of their kit, they have like just this portion where you can just buy the equipment and the yeast. They also have an element where you can buy the honey. So this is with honey as well. Well, they gave me honey, I should say. I've used this honey before, actually. It's good, it's clover honey. Step one, actually, you know, I'm gonna switch the gears of this video. This video is going to be talking about each step of the process, but way faster than before. So. Starting right now, we're moving super speed. We're gonna sanitize our brew with the sanitizer. Pouring this in, it says save half the packet for bottling. I'll do that, let me go put some water in here. Sanitized. We're gonna fill up to about here on our carboy with water. We've got our two and a half pounds of honey. We're gonna add that. Here's our honey, we're gonna pour it in. Next up, we shake it, put our bung on top. We've got a separate bung here that's closed that I know won't get stopped, stuck. But I don't wanna use this thing. I wanna use my drill. Affiliate link below, this is a game changer. Sanitized. So something I'm gonna use that's not included in your kit is a hydrometer, a tube. I want to check the gravity, specific gravity of this. So I'm gonna go ahead and get a sample of it. This is really only useful if you care about knowing your alcohol by volume. This kit's roughly gonna put out probably a 10 to 12% as it says on the side. Float your hydrometer in. Starting gravity of, yep, right in that realm, 1.090. So that will put us at a 11.8-ish brew if everything ferments, which it will. So now, I will say, part of their thing, they talk about adding your nutrients before you add all of your water. I'm not gonna do that. Sorry, Craft of Brew. I love your ability to, you know, make everything so nice. Packet of nutrients in D47. I'm just gonna dump the whole thing. Nutrients are in. Got my gravity reading. We're gonna take our bung, nicely put it on. Just do a little shaking to try and get some of that yeast and everything to get involved in there. Fill up our airlock with some water. Put it on top. Write down what we got. So I've so far followed the instructions. When we come back after this is done fermenting, we're gonna get a little crazy. So far I'm impressed. Nice mead making kit to start. I wish it had a hydrometer. But again, I get that's money and you don't necessarily need it if you're just a beginner and you are just following an exact recipe. We also are gonna add our nutrients in day two and five. Anyways, we'll be back. All right, we're back. It's been about 12, 13 days, which is not that long in the grand scheme of things. We're gonna check the gravity reading real fast, so. Got my sanitized things here. Pretty sure it's done based off of the amount of stuff at the bottom there and the very, very, very slow bubbling, which is 
probably degassing. All right, looking at our hydrometer, this is indeed done fermenting. We're at 1.000. So we went from 1.0 to 1.000, which I believe is about an 11.8% mead. Actually, do I wanna pour that in? No. We'll, we'll taste that here in a second. Um, that means we're gonna rack this over. This kit does not come with an auto siphon itself, but it does come with the tubing and it came with that racking cane. So I'm gonna use an auto siphon and tubing, but you would probably just have to use the racking cane and then suction <laughs> the liquid out of here. Use gravity to help you to move into there. This is already, well, this is another vessel that I have also not provided to you. Um, if you don't have another vessel, you can use any container and then clean out the original vessel and then rack it back into it. So you have something to set in. You don't wanna leave the mead in a plastic fermenter if it's gonna age for a while, but I don't know that we're gonna age this one for a while. All right, let's go and rack this auto siphon tubing. Now I'm gonna tilt this so that it will continue to pick up some of the mead that's at the bottom. Essentially it's just helping to avoid the sediment. The moment I start getting any junk is when I stop. And I think I might be done early because my suction has stopped. Yep, that's about it. Okay, well, I lost just a little bit more mead than I want, but that's okay. Let's move this out of the way. So this kit also in its own instructions talks about degassing on like day two day five, and then later on. So degassing is the process of essentially swirling this around some. I'm just gonna do real fast. Or taking something and, and mixing it a little bit. Now we don't wanna do this a ton, because in truth, we're gonna get oxygen involved in here if we go too crazy. So we just did a little bit here, and you'll notice some bubbling coming from the sides. The yeast have trapped gas inside of this liquid, and this just helps to get rid of that trapped gas. The kit also comes with some potassium sorbate, which is what we need to be able to back sweeten this thing. So I think I might end up doing that. So I already have a big old thing of potassium sorbate here. Rather than open this up, I'm just gonna go ahead and put what it says, which is a half a teaspoon in per gallon. Now this does not include metabisulfite, which is normally the other partner of these, this stabilizer, which is what this is. This is a stabilizer. So I'm not gonna worry about that right now. Um, I'm actually gonna take, we're gonna taste test this little sample here. We're gonna drink straight from this. There is gonna be a little bit of a yeasty taste because again, we just got off of the racked yeast and they're still somewhat falling out of suspension. Very dry mead that actually doesn't have, has a little bit of yeasty character. Definitely some heat from alcohol, meaning there's like a burn. It has promise though. The honey character is pretty well retained, which I like. There is a little bit of a funk that I think will go away with time. It's got a little bit of a bite. So here's what I wanna do. I've added some stabilizers. I might end up back sweetening, sweetening this, which means that I take and add more honey to this container. But right now, how I'm gonna differentiate or differ from what the kit says, because at this point the kit says to basically let it set and then bottle it, which we'll get to the bottling stage later. I'm actually gonna turn this into a methaglin, which right now it's a traditional mead. A methaglin is a spiced mead. I'm just gonna add one cinnamon stick to my carboy. I'm not gonna worry about sanitizing it or anything. That shouldn't have any re-fermentation uh, because it's not really sugar necessarily, but we're gonna let that set for another, let's say, let's say a week. We'll taste test it as we go along and figure out when we wanna take it off of that. At that point, we might decide to go ahead and bottle it or back sweeten, but we'll come back and talk about it. All right, it has been probably about six or seven days since we put the cinnamon stick in. This cinnamon stick was large, therefore it's gonna impart flavor quickly. So we're actually gonna go ahead and, and do a quick taste test as it stands, but then probably uh, end up back sweetening. If you don't end up making a different version of this with a fruit or a spice, you're just gonna have the traditional side, which you would let set in the same sort of state, and then you would rack it into a new container. And we're gonna talk about back sweetening in a second, but what does this taste like with a little bit of cinnamon in it? It's very cinnamon prominent on the nose. Ooh, that adds like a, I mean, the honey character is like dried out. 
doesn't have any sweetness there. But the cinnamon comes in and it adds some more complexity, gives it more flavor. Obviously, it's a new flavor. I think with some sweetness, the honey character will be pronounced because we're adding sweetness from honey. And then we can also take and get some more maybe warmer cinnamon character. I like where the cinnamon is now. It's not too strong, but it's also strong enough where you're like, oh, that's a cinnamon flavor. So we're gonna go ahead and back sweeten this thing. In the evolution of this mead, we have gone through primary fermentation. We racked it into a new container. We added the potassium sorbate to stabilize it. We then added our cinnamon stick, which was an optional step, of course. You don't have to do that. And now we're at the point where you're gonna go ahead, or we're gonna go ahead and rack it into a new container and back sweeten it because we can actually back sweeten with a fermentable sugar, like in this case, honey. Now, we didn't add a Camden tablet, which is potassium metabisulfite, also an important thing. I'm gonna go ahead and add one in. So this is a Camden tablet. It's normally, um, well, if you just have the powder version of potassium metabisulfite, it's 0.6 grams of potassium metabisulfite. In a moment, we're gonna rack onto or into, I should say, this carboy. So I have a scale underneath here. We're gonna add our Camden tablet. The Camden tablet or metabisulfite is recommended to partner with the potassium sorbate to truly stop fermentation. This normally takes out any extra oxygen that's in the brew. So I probably should have done this whenever I first stabilized it, but I didn't. We're now gonna take and add some honey. Of course, our kit only came with two and a half pounds. So we're using some honey that we have. This is orange blossom honey. You can use any honey you want. I wanna add eight ounces. So that's what I'm gonna do. All right, there's eight ounces of honey. That should get us to 1.017-ish final gravity, which is a little bit of sweetness. Let me go ahead and sanitize this. All right, we're now safe to go ahead and rack this into this container. So that's what I'm gonna do. Elevate, of course. Put this into here. And there we go. In a moment, we're gonna mix all of this up, but first we're gonna rack it all. This is still not very clear, and we can talk about clearing steps in a little bit, but as it stands, is it bad that it's not clear? No. All right, we've racked out of the container. This is some stuff we don't want. A little bit of sort of sediment and the cinnamon stick. We're now gonna mix this up. It's a little bottling wand. Now we're mixing, and I know some of you are going, wait, you're introducing oxygen, and you know, there's a little bit happening here. The potassium metabisulfite actually helps protect us against a lot of this oxygenation because it actually soaks up and gets rid of the oxygen. All right, we've mixed it up. Let's get a taste and a, take another gravity reading to see if I'm right. All right, our final gravity, I was a little off, is about one point, pretty dang close though, one point, 015, I said 1.017. Let's see what it tastes like. I mean, that honey is pronounced again. We added more honey. The cinnamon is like a light little sizzle on top. I don't know if a better term for that. This thing's very good. It's still young. I mean, we're not more than I like 20 days old at this point. I think if my math is right. So pretty young mead. This says you can finish it in 30 days. However, I'm, this is not gonna be done in 30 days. Um, and that's because we are going to take, we're gonna put this back into here. And again, you don't have to do this. You could drink all that, but I'm just gonna pour it back in. You notice that this is not clear. We're gonna let it set and maybe see if some time will help to clear up this brew. If not, that's okay. But we're gonna stick our airlock back on. We are gonna write down on the side of our cor corboy, carboy, what we did here. I wrote down when I racked it again, how much honey I used to back sweeten and the final gravity. And now we put it away and we see if it'll clear up naturally. If not, then we might be bottling a not super clear mead because I'm gonna try and stay close, close, I can't talk, close-ish to the 30 day mark, but I'll be back when we bottle this thing. Okay, we are done with this mead. What I did after letting it set for a while longer was basically just elevate it and put it into bottles. And I got a fair amount of bottles out of this, uh, about, probably about eight, six or seven beer bottles, a larger beer bottle, and then a wine bottle. So not a bad yield. Let's go ahead and taste this thing. And then I'll tell you my final thoughts about this kit. Here's what we got. It's not super clear. I just want to be very honest with you. I kind of got impatient with just letting it set. It did set for an extra couple weeks. So this thing's not very clear. 
There are ways to clear it. In fact, I have a whole video on how to clear homebrew. You can go check it out in the description. There's eight different ways that I test there. So you can check that out if you want. I decided not to clear this one with any of my methods because I wanted just to be true to this kit and not necessarily add too much crazy stuff. So our cinnamon mead. It's definitely a nice warm cinnamon with this light floral wildflowery honey side. Honestly, I really like the aroma. It smells good. Here we go. You know, that's pretty good. After setting for a couple more weeks to clear or age, this thing is pretty good. We're pretty young. This, you know, it says ready to drink in one month. The point of this tasting is six weeks, I would say. Um, so six weeks from starting. We didn't go to that four week mark. In fact, I'd probably say four weeks is pretty young. Go ahead and let it set for a little while longer. This thing's a higher ABV mead that needs that help, but the, the cinnamon stick that I added really adds some extra fun flavor. It does have a really nice presence of honey, of course. The honey they provided or in this kit was quality and uh, it's pretty smooth. It's a little basic in that it doesn't have a lot of tannin necessarily. It does have some boozy sides, got some ABV presence here. You can feel that burn, but because I back sweetened, because I added the cinnamon stick, I made it a little more complex, presented more honey character. Honestly, not bad. So how do I feel about this kit? I think this kit's pretty good. I think it's a great starting point for people. I don't love some elements of this. For example, it doesn't come with an, a true auto siphon, which is so, so important. You can use the racking cane and do some stuff like that, but the auto siphon is like a game changer and you will get miles out of it. So maybe if you do purchase this kit in tandem, you can go ahead and buy yourself an auto siphon and that will save you a lot of hassle in the future. The, the uh, glass cardboard that it came with is nice. The instruction manual is good. It does include some very detailed instructions for people who are wanting to really dive deep in the beginning. I do like that it includes yeast nutrient uses lava and D47, which can be a temperamental yeast, to be honest, but it's temperamental being if you don't ferment at the right temperature, it's not gonna like you. Great instructions. You know, it's even got some recipe variations in the back. It talks about back sweetening too. Pamphlet really does a pretty good job of getting people started. This kit is very adaptable for other recipes and it even talks about that in there. I'd say this is a great kit to start with. Auto siphon is probably the only thing you're missing and the hydrometer is the other one. Both of those will take you miles when you're doing your home brewing, and I highly suggest you go ahead and uh, buy both of those. I do think that there's probably better kits or will be better kits that come out in the future, just to be honest with you, that include maybe an auto siphon and some things like that. The best kits in the world are the ones that actually come with like a bucket and a carboy because this thing, because I started with only one gallon carboy after sediment, I had you know a fair amount of headspace. So having a bucket and a carboy is super helpful. But the airlock, all that stuff is really nice too. I do have an affiliate code with them. If you are interested in getting this kit, if you will click the link below, that will actually go and support some, a little bit of your purchase goes back to support the channel. Uh, so they sent me this kit to review my honest review. It's a it's pretty it's pretty good It's there's some things that are missing that would make your life really easy But I think from their cost perspective, they don't want to include all of those It'll make it really pricey on their end. So I understand some of that check it out if you want craft a brew kit link in description for that Maybe add a cinnamon stick if you want to do something different or if you want to use one of my recipes Go ahead and click below or really just click anywhere on the channel and you'll find a recipe that you might like. So thanks for watching and I appreciate you and your time. Have a great day. Cheers.